But this building here is sometimes called, these lower two floors, is called the Peace Building. That's the nickname of the building. It's actually the A.J. Musty Foundation. It's now wrapped in scaffolding because they have to redo some of the work on the building. And the corner window you see there, which says now www.papertiger.org, was once upon a time the office of both PADD, Political Art Documentation and Distribution, and Repo History. The group was initially named by Clive Philpott, who was the librarian at the Museum of Modern Art at the time, and his, he called it Political Art Documentation. About six months later, we added another D to make it distribution. It had regular monthly meetings in which people came and gave talks about various aspects of culture and politics, everything from the feminist movement to black liberation, to Native American rights. The group also managed to create artworks for demonstrations. It marched on Washington with gigantic posters and banners and sculptural objects they created. It had marches here in New York City. It did a window project at the New Museum against militarism and anti-war and the stationing of Persian missiles in Europe, which was an important topic in around 1981-82 when Ronald Reagan was upping the ante with the Soviet Union at the time. As with a lot of these groups, over time it sort of winnowed down until there was only about 15 or 20 reasonably active members. And those 20 members uh, actually formed a fairly structured uh, sort of institutional operation. It wasn't really very loose and everyone, of course, had a vote. It wasn't um, representative democracy, but there were still ways that projects and ideas were channeled through these various committees in order to streamline the whole process. It never really became a deeply institutionalized organization. It had no real staff. It had no real, it had, we had an office and a phone, and that was about all we really, we actually uh, had in terms of any sort of apparent sort of, uh, sort of, uh, you know, sort of institutional status. In Repo History, which also was in this building in 1989, it took over the offices of PADD. Repo History was a group of artists, activists, educators, media people who got together ostensibly to create a counter exhibition to the Columbus Quincentenary. At a certain point we decided what we were going to do is put alternative signs up in the street of Manhattan that would talk about histories that people didn't know about that had been repressed or forgotten. What we anticipated doing was actually going out in the middle of the night or early in the morning when it was still dark and posting these signs in the street. And because, again, as you can see, New York City is a very visually busy and distracting place, most of these signs would simply stay up and we could, we could just tell people word of mouth to go and look for them. A number of people got involved in the group, one of whom had access to official channels by which projects had been put up on the streets by artists. And we went through channels and eventually got permits from the Department of Transportation to put signs up on various lampposts at specific locations in Manhattan on several occasions. And the first project actually took place in 1992. And there were signs created by Native American artists which talked about the way the history looked before Europeans came. There were signs about uh, the way, um, most recently, Nelson Mandela had done a victory lap or a victory tour here in New York City after being released from prison in South Africa. There were signs indicating where the first slave market was located, actually on Wall Street downtown. But every sign had a permit it lasted only so many months. And within a year, we had to go and remove all the signs in order to be in compliance with the permit. In 94, there was another project which was about gay and lesbian history here, more in the East Village, and the, excuse me, in the West Village area that's west of where we are now. And that marks such things as the Stonewall Uprising, the first ACT UP demonstration, which is a little south of here, uh, a very famous gay and lesbian bar that was nearby. And that project actually ran into some difficulty from the newly elected Giuliani administration 
but we managed to get a permit for it. The last street sign project that we created uh, was called Civil Disturbances, Battles for Justice in New York City. And that particular project was uh, basically shut down initially by uh, the New York City, by the Department of Transportation, almost certainly indirectly by Giuliani. We then went to a law firm, or a law firm actually came to us, I should say, and said we would actually handle this uh, situation for you pro bono, which means free, and they would go to the city and they would uh, basically tell them that they had no legal right to not allow the project to take place on the street, which they did. And after a series of negotiations, the city backed down and the project did take place. Repo History did its last project in 2000. Um, the group then broke up, as so many of these groups do. Um, do you want to talk a bit more uh, about the influence of repo history and uh, also PET uh, and, yeah, let's say Grand Fury and uh, the other groups like Group Material to the, as you said, new interventionists and also draw a line from the past to these new movements and new activities? I think it's difficult to draw a straight line between then and now for a number of reasons. One is that the socioeconomic situation is so very different that the way people form collectives and the way they do politicize culture has changed a great deal since the 1970s really, but certainly since the 1980s. I also think that some of the groups that we're talking about have only a kind of marginal visibility within the history of art or within the history of even sort of politicized art, which is surprising. I mean, even group material, which is fairly well known, has a limited sort of visibility in the art world in general. And people probably don't know some of the more radical projects they did in the streets of New York City in the 1980s. They put a sign project up illegally in the street called Dazabaus, which means big poster project or big, big poster wall. And what they did was they actually went through the street and asked people questions as if they were taking a poll about current political events. And they extracted certain quotes from these sort of everyday people and then put them up on these gigantic posters. And it was an attempt to create a kind of town square or a discourse in the street so those projects that are not so well known by group material, those I think are more inspiring for, I would think, a younger group of intervent interventionist artists today in some ways than the works that were carried out more strictly within institutional spaces. There were a number of artists groups that took place in the early 80s, late 70s, who pretty much have kind of fallen through the cracks into what I sometimes call a kind of dark matter or a kind of archive of unknown practices. It's not to say that they don't continue to influence indirectly, and I do think they do, which is why this line you want me to draw is tricky. You know? I mean, it is both a line, and at the same time, it's maybe like a, a curved line in a sort of non-Euclidean sort of geometric space. You know? um, because indirectly, through people like myself, through other people who have come in contact with these groups, people are taught in classes, a word is mentioned here, someone half hears something, and there's a way that the knowledge is transmitted in a kind of broken and fragmented way. Well, to continue our uh, discussion or that what you mentioned before, I sent you already in the email <laughs> some quotes from a text that was written by you, um, where you said that the new interventionists are like political structures without politics. What I was trying to get at with that quote is a couple of things. One is the fact that we are uh, in the neoliberal era and in the, the kind of um, post, after the sort of mass radical movements of the 70s and the 60s, you really have